Um, now we'll move on to item B, please. Item 6B, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Ludorf and Scalmanini for the design of the acapella well replacement project in an amount not to exceed $610,000. And we're going to turn over the, to Hewan Ritchie, please. Yes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. My name is Hewan Ritchie, um, City Engineer for San Bruno. I would like to turn this uh, presentation over to Dahlia Manawis. She is our associate civil engineer who is working on the acapella wall project. Hi, good evening, um, Mayor and members of the City Council um, and members of the public. Um, I'm Dahlia Manawis with the Public Works Department, and I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I will be presenting on the Acapella Well Replacement Project. Um, the objective for this presentation is to provide background information um, on the Acapella Well Replacement Project, project phasing and schedule, and also to recommend council action to authorize city manager to execute an agreement with Ludhorf and Skelmanini. Uh, moving forward, I'll be referring to them as LNS. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, let me. On the agenda, um, Uh, sorry, excuse me. On the agenda, we have um, we will cover the acapella well replacement, background, project phasing and scheduling, scope of work, staff recommendation, council questions, public co public comment, um, and council deliberation. Hey, Dahlia, upon this can you click the display settings and ex uh, duplicate the monitor so we're seeing the full slide. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, slideshow. Okay. Is that, um, can you go to slideshow uh, at the top? Oh, okay. Slideshow. Very good. Sorry. Is this better? That's perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry about that. I apologize. Okay, so on the agenda, we will um, be covering the acapella well replacement background, project phasing and scheduling, scope of work, staff recommendation, and conclude with um, council questions, public comment, council deliberation, and action. So, as we are aware, um, the city owns and operates its water system. The city operates five groundwater wells that extract, treat, and pump water into the distribution system. Four wells are currently active and one inactive, and that is the well 15, um, also known as Commodore Well. So well 15 had been a significant source of the city's water production until it went out of service in 2010 due to low production requiring constant maintenance. So in 2012, the city procured Erler and Kalowalski, in, uh, in, also known as EKI, for engineering design services for the Well 15 replacement. The scope of work included constructing test wells and the design of the production well. The following year in 2013, the city evaluated six potential well sites for the Well Number 15 replacement project, and two sites were selected, um, Acapella site and Commodore site, were found to be best suitable for a new well for reasons related to um, the likelihood of high well yield production rate located away from existing city wells resulting in less interference from other wells, um, no additional impact on the surrounding environment and the ability to provide the additional supply to pressure zones three, four and five 
without additional infrastructure um, that includes piping or pumps. Um, in October of 2013, staff present presented an update on well 15 replacement project to the city council with a recommendation to proceed with des design and award of a co construction contract for the two wells. So one at the acapella site and the other at the Commodore Park site here, you see in the circles. Uh, the first test well would be installed at the acapella site and the other at the Commodore Park site. So the first well would be installed um, at the acapella site and if the results were favorable, the city would not drill the second test well at Commodore Park site. And this would result in substantial cost savings. In addition, the city would avoid any disruption to the dog park at Commodore Park. The city council concurred with staff's recommendation. Um, the following year in September 2014, construction of the test well at the acapella site was completed. Drilling logs were analyzed and water quality sampling was performed at the new test well. EKI concluded that a production well installed at the acapella site should be capable of producing similar to the production rate of several other wells in San Bruno. So the water quality sampling data was reviewed and it was concluded that a production well installed at the acapella site would yield a combination of water quality and production rate satisfying the city's need. An additional test well would not be necessary. So during the conceptual design of the production well, it was determined that the required building footprint for the wellhead uh, treatments facilities needed to be larger to accommodate the filters, piping and electric, uh, electrical equipment so the ingress and egress for the well site was obstructed by an adjacent vacant parcel that I've highlighted here in blue. Um, so due to these site constraints, the project was halted. And in 2017, Monogram Residential Acapella, the property owner of the adjacent parcel at the time, executed a grant deed to transfer ownership of this adjacent parcel to the city in which the city accepted on July 7th, 2017. So by the time the city acquired additional real estate to move forward with the project, both the city and EKI had experienced a turnover with the team that had originally worked on the des design that would necessitate the submittal of a new proposal and had insufficient funds to finalize the, the design. Uh, staff determined that the design of the production well and facilities could be phased as another project and proceed with issuing the request for proposal. In January 2021, the city issued a request for proposals, which was posted on the city's website and sent to uh, multiple consulting firms. Um, one proposal was received from LNS. Uh, staff conducted an evaluation on the received proposal and has determined that Ludhorf and Scalmanili is highly qualified, has demonstrated accurate project understanding, has substantial design experience on water well projects, and has successfully completed similar design projects for various water agencies across the state, such as San Jose uh, Water Company, SFPUC, and the City of Mountain View. And the pr the proposal cost is six hundred and ten thousand dollars, and within the current budget of one point eight million available in this fiscal year. So the acapella well replacement project will be completed in two phases. The first phase will consist of designing and constructing a production well. Um, and this includes drilling, um, water quality, soil sampling, well construction, and well development with an estimated completion of about 12 months. And the second phase will consist of designing and constructing the well facilities that includes necessary housing, pump, motor, um, automatic control equipment, um, such as SCADA and discharge piping and disinfection equipment with an estimated completion of 18 months. So the scope of work for the acapella well replacement project includes preparing bid documents and construction support for phase one and two. 
also obtaining approvals and uh, permits from regulatory agencies and preparing required regulatory documents. And the, sto the scope also includes decommissioning of well 15 in accordance with California's Title 22 code, uh, code of regulations related to drinking water. So staff is recommending city council to adopt resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with LNS for the design of the acapella well replacement project in amount not to exceed $610,000. And I will turn this over for any questions and discussions. Thank you for your uh, presentation. I appreciate it. And if there's any members of the uh, public that wish to speak, if you could raise your uh, hand at this time, uh, wait a couple minutes and I'll turn that, it to council members for questions. A any questions from council at this time? Okay, let's go to the public. I'm, um, and I know the city clerk will correct me, but I, I see uh, no hands at this time. So we will end um, public comment on this topic and we will bring it to council for questions or comments. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, council member Mason. Thank you. So I think I just kind of need a little bit of a better understanding of the um, risk involved um, of not approving this tonight just because it's um, half a million dollars. What is there an immediate? Is there is this an immediate need that can't be part of next year's budget? Um, sure, uh, Councilmember Mason, I can help to answer that. Hamilton hey, Chief City Engineer for San Bruno. Good evening. Um, there is currently CEQA um, exemption for this project because it is replacing Well 15, but we have been advised that if we wait too long to construct this project and get it underway that that um, sequel clearance could expire. Um, and so, you know, in an effort to not go through the environment, or, you know, go through the environmental process of um, clearing a, a new well, um, we would like to move forward with the design as soon as possible. Okay, so then if the, the this is, sounds like this is really for the design from the staff report and from what you just mentioned, but the actual construction in the staff report is listed as $3 million. So are we going to be able to, um, are we going to be able to produce this, you know, this design, this project to get it up to the place where construction would actually occur? And then are we going to be able to fund the actual construction? Uh, and they're all kind of part of the same question is without the $3 million for the construction, are we going to be in compliance with CEQA? Yes, and so um, this first phase will be the design, and um, we hope to, you know, go through the design, and then um, we will have to budget for the design, or sorry, for the construction once those estimates are better um, known, and um, we are undergoing the budgeting process right now, and we will budget to, um, you know, what is necessary in order to construct the project at the appropriate you know, fiscal year. Um, it could mean that we um, proceed with the design now and then budget for construction in fiscal year 2023, so 22 23, so that, so that we can award um, in the early part of the next fiscal year. Um, and of course, we work closely with finance to ensure that we have adequate funding in order to um, you know, meet the project needs. And then I can see the city manager's hands up. I do I have more questions, but he may want to answer this part. So, so uh, thank you to the mayor. Yes, um, please. I just want to point out that uh, council member Mason, your question uh, begun with uh, potentially holding off till next, next budget cycle. I just want to make it clear that there's not an appropriation request with the action that is before you tonight. The money for this project was built into the current budget, which is typical for these projects because you sort of go on this stair step ladder of design and then budget for, for construction. It's also worth noting, uh, because I've, I've spent the last few weeks in very detailed capital budgeting meetings uh, with, all of our, with, with all of our staff, is that we are going uh, through a practice of 
budgeting for the dollars that will be expended in the fiscal year that that work will occur versus saying, oh, we have a $3 million project, let's budget all that money today. And so we are moving to a best practice, which is to plan out your expenditures over the multi-year cycle that they will occur, which actually decreases the amount of revenue that you need to generate to the fund. And so it's important to note that this sort of stair-step process where we budget for design and then we budget for construction is totally normal, totally envisioned with how we plan these very large multi-year projects. Okay, helpful. Um, so then in that case, the should then the actual construction um, be also a portion of it budgeted then in the next year? Would we anticipate that in June as opposed to 2000, the following year, the 2023? Um, my recollection is that we are budgeting to design for this fiscal year, um, but that does beg the question of whether we'll need to, you know, potentially pre-appropriate um, a little bit earlier if we do to get design done quickly and need to move to the construction phase. So that is possible. But I think currently we are um, budgeting to design until we have a better idea what the construction cost would be, because the first phase of construction is the production well, um, and there there may potentially be you know, adequate funding in order to um, award the construction of the production well. Um, but of course, I think the next phase, which is the building and the pumps and the electrical, um, that will likely not occur until the next fiscal year. And so we would uh, request that appropriate amount um, at that time. Okay. Yeah. I just what I don't want is I don't want to another you know design your plans and then not move on, not have the funds or not be prepared to move on to the next step to for this whole process to come to fruition. Um, the other question I had is you mentioned that um, I think Daily City, South City, um, actually it's in the let me pull up the staff report um, that there's kind of like this GSR partnership, South San Francisco, Colma, Daily City, and San Bruno. And so what are, uh, this is, you know, over half a million dollars, what are their contributions to this effort? Um, so the agreement is more an agreement with um, SFPUC and you'll have to excuse me, I don't know all the details related to this agreement, but my understanding is that we have an agreement with SFPUC um, during the wet years to um, not pump and that they would provide us with um, drinking water supply, and then during the drought years, then we would um, use the groundwater wells to uh, supplement um, and, you know, relieve a little pressure off of SFPUC. Um, and so those are called the take years. Um, and so they're actually uh, paying us not to um, pump currently, and then we will um, be pumping later when we need to supplement with our groundwater well when, um, you know, there's more of drought years. I can supplement that answer. Um, Please, city manager. It's also important to know uh, the city engineer was absolutely right. They do pay us not to pump, but it is an asset that the city of San Bruno has its own wells. Uh, most, uh, a number of those cities do not have their own wells. And the fact that we have our own wells, which provides a sustainability and a resource here, also means that we have to uh, do these projects to re uh, rehabilitate them and, and, and ensure that, that they're functioning. And so while we are getting money, uh, it's important to know that this is our asset um, uh, that provides significant benefits that we pay for locally. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then um, is there a benefit that would then, I guess, um, end up saving money of our, for our residents at some point? And do we have any projections of what that would look like? I think they would have the security of having um, a groundwater supply that not other, as um, city manager Krogan had mentioned, not other, not many other agencies are fortunate to own them, their water enterprise and have the facilities to produce um, water to meet the demands. So I think that would be the, the benefit. Um, I can't say that we did a dollar cost estimate, but I think there's, um, you know, inherent value in having that supply. Okay. Okay. I think that's those are my questions for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Medina. Yes, uh, thank you uh, for the report. Um, yeah, this is a this is one of those projects that got kind of lost. Um, but 
here we are uh, dealing with it, right? And uh, my first question is, I'm a little surprised by the lack of proposals received. Um, and I don't believe this, this uh, designer worked with us before. Um, did staff get an opportunity to kind of find out uh, were people too busy? Like, why, why, why did we only get one proposal? Yes, we we wondered the same thing, and so we contacted them. It was um, a variety of responses. At one firm um, we worked with, apparently they changed their processes, and so they weren't able to. Um, they didn't. I guess it slipped through their cracks, which is not a great answer. And you know, I think they're kicking themselves. And I think that is something that we really considered. Um, we, we really took care in contacting the, uh, the, re the references to see what the references were like, because um, I personally have not heard of them either, but they had very positive referrals. And so, um, I mean, we posted it on our website as well as emailed out to um, 12 different firms. And, you know, we got a response back from a firm that um, we had worked with previously. That was not one of the 12 that we had emailed. Um, and so they had taken the initiative. I, I think, you know, had their references come back, um, you know, potentially questionable, we would have, you know, readily um, re-advertised, but in an effort to, you know, keep the project moving and because we did do our due diligence in, in getting references, um, we, we opted to proceed. Right. Um, so I'm always a little apprehensive when you know, we're, we're dealing just with one bidder and it's, it's hard to to, to determine if we're getting value there. Um, but here we are. Um, I'm in, I'm in favor of, 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 of this project. Um, and thank you for some of the questions that I asked uh, earlier today. Um, this, this well will, uh, will generate or increase the capacity of our system 25%. Um, and apparently our water is produced at half the cost of what we buy it for. So every gallon of every, every unit of water that we get is, is, is a savings. Um, so um, I wanted to, um, to let people know about that because um, it's, it's, it's really unique that we have our own water system and, and for years, we weren't reinvesting into our infrastructure of, of getting this water out. And this, this well has been out of service for 12 years. So um, we, we need to make sure, and, and as, uh, as uh, a beloved uh, Chris Palace would say, you know, water is life. And, and, and uh, here we are in a drought here and, and we're trying to work out that we, we do have an agreement to deal with that a little bit. Um, so a question for the well abandonment, is that cost covered in, in, in this part of the project or that's, that's a, a separate cost for abandoning, abandoning the, the current well? Uh, that would need to be designed. Um, I, I suppose it could go with either, although it would potentially make more sense to go with the latter phase of the construction because the initial phase is the production well and might not really lend itself to you know, the type of contractor who drills wells. But, but, but th this would be part of their scope to oversee the design of the well abandonment and that all gets approved by the, uh, the, from the state. But um, that would be something they would manage in this 610,000. Um, yes, so the decommissioning of the well. Okay, okay. Um, and and I guess I guess the biggest the biggest issue that I have with with this project right now is as I as I look at the capital improvement program page two ninety and it it has the cost there of forty six thousand dollars and construction of the one point eight million so. I think I'm 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 guessing and giving staff the benefit of the doubt. This is some, this is one of the projects that kind of got lost, and there is no money budgeted for years 2021, 20, 22 through twenty four twenty five. So, 
that additional three million to build the well um, isn't anywhere. And but this is the reality we're facing: that in order to build this well and the facilities, we're going to need to spend that money. Correct, and we will need to design it now when we have sufficient budget to pay for the design right now. And this is part of one of the projects, you know, of the many projects we're looking at for the CIP um, budgeting process to make sure that it's adequately phased and funded appropriately. Got it. And and because it's in these numbers here in this in the CIP, um, the the council. Eliminated the rate increase in our water and sewer for this year because a big reason was we had adequate funding available to complete uh, to continue operations. So this additional money that currently is not shown in the CIP, it's it's we ha we'll we'll have enough funding in our water enterprise to to go ahead and cover this. It's not going to affect um, operations. Why don't I uh, ask the city manager uh, to chime in on this, please? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Mayor Medina uh, and, and Council Member Medina. I think it's important to back up before we go forward. I don't think it's a correct um, uh, statement to say that this project was lost. Uh, the, the, the city uh, made progress on a number of water and sewer projects, and this one is now bubbling up, uh, and, and we are now uh, moving forward on this project. In addition, uh, with regard to the CIP form that you're looking at, what I, which I believe is in our adopted 2021 budget, what you're seeing is that the projected costs in the out years are not there. That does not mean that the city does not have sufficient funds uh, within the water fund balance to cover this project and other projects. It is true that the city did cancel the fifth 5% rate increase because there are sufficient funds in the water fund. I just had asked staff to confirm for me the balance in the water fund, but I believe it's over $10 million. And so while the infrastructure that we have to do uh, is um, significant, and uh, there, uh, when and, and that's that ten million is actually in the 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 the, the operating portion. Uh, there's over forty million dollars of accumulated balance uh, in, in the water fund. And so, as we project out all of the projects we need, uh, there is sufficient funds to cover those projects. Now, that does not mean that we may not have to increase water rates in the future. And we've had those conversations with uh, the city council before that when you go uh, a number of years without increasing rates, uh, then you have to do a larger increase. And so uh, we do have to do a, a five-year rate study in the next uh, calendar year, and we are planning in the next fiscal year, and we are planning for that. Uh, but uh, I just want to caution uh, council be, uh, that because there were not funds shown in those out years, uh, you should not conclude that the city does not have sufficient funds to move forward with this project. Um, and uh, and we will have larger conversations of, about the water fund uh, through our, um, uh, our capital budgeting process. I, I, I appreciate that answer. I, that's why I asked the question, making sure that there was funding available. Um, so I'm, sat I'm satisfied with that answer. Um, we do need to build this well, and uh, I am in favor of this project. Thank you. Council Member Hamilton. So I just wanted to share, um, as you uh, uh, all know, I'm our, I am the city's um, uh, representative on the uh, Bowska Board Bay Area Water Supply and Conservation Agency, which manages our relationship with the SFPUC to ensure we have a voice in, in um, the, the agreements to get water from Hetch Hetchy. Um, the, you know, we heard, we heard as part of the staff report that, um, you know, how, how things operate, you know, when we're in wet years, we 
try to let our aquifers, the local aquifers replenish so that that water is there for dry years. Um, in 2018, Sacramento, the state, state uh, legislature in Sacramento adopted the approved uh, Bay Delta plan. Um, and if that stands, there's currently, there's, we're the, currently the, the, the board and, um, and the SFPUC and other agencies are banding together to try to get an alternate plan in place. But if that plan stands, um, the, the, the in multi-year multi -year drought years, when we have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back droughts, which are gonna be more and more common as we move, move forward, um, we could face up to 50% mandatory rationing um, over, over current levels um, because of the amount of water that the Bay Delta plan would, would um, require that we um, uh, not take from the Tuolumne River. So it's so critical that we have, it, it, we're very lucky to have our own local sources of water and it's important, it's very important that we um, maintain the infrastructure to be able to get at it. So I'm, I am absolutely in favor of this, of this project. Um, one question that I have is once we, once we have the design, um, would we, would that put us in a position to apply for, for state or federal grants to help with the construction? Are there any other, are there any opportunities that we're looking at? Um, out there that might be available to us to help us with those construction costs, considering it would be a water infrastructure project. That's Certainly right. opportunities um, as they present themselves, we will look at those and, um, you know, we can keep an eye out for those even during design. I don't think we necessarily need to wait until design is over. Um, if the state or region were to provide funding, um, we certainly look into that and, um, you know, apply as appropriate. Great, thank you. Okay. Council Member Salazar. Thank you. Uh, and, and so I just wanted to also uh, express my support for not just this well, but um, the existence of wells in general in, in San Bruno. And, uh, the vice mayor uh, mentioned Chris Palace and it definitely would be remiss of us if, uh, if Chris Palace's name were not mentioned whenever wells come up because he was a, a very staunch advocate for, for first bringing wells to San Bruno and they've proven, um, although expensive to maintain, uh, a valuable and important asset to the city. And uh, we've been without this well for a while and I think uh, looking forward at our infrastructure, this will be an important part of it. And so I just wanted to add that, no other questions. Now, um, as was stated by the vice mayor and council member Salazar, yes, I remember uh, Chris Palace was uh, probably one of the few on the council then that was very adamant about uh, doing that and having the well supply and, and that it does save for us not having to buy as much. Uh, but then we obviously have to, we had to, we were required to balance with the aquifer that we didn't take too much. But, but needless to say, yes, uh, that was one of his passions. So these are important things that we need to keep up and uh, take care of. And so, yes, I as well am in support and appreciate my colleagues' questions and engagement in this. And it is by action of a resolution. Is there any action by council? Move to approve. Second. Motion, uh, Medina, second and Salazar. Roll call, please. Council Member Hamilton? Aye. Council Member Mason? Aye. Council Member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor Marty Medina? Aye. Mayor Rico Medina? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you.